Welcome to Weather Trendnet Masterclass on Climate Tech. Today, we'll talk about the climate related financial disclosures and the difference between the physical and transition risk types. Global warming is induced primarily by the industrial activities, transportation, and the power sector. Among the most important consequences of global warming are changes in frequency and intensity of severe weather events, such as storms, wildfire, drought, flooding, and also the global sea level rise. These natural phenomena are known as hazards. Economic and social impact of hazards in changing climate pose a major threat to financial stability. What means the climate-related risk? Let's make sure that we're talking about the same thing. To formalize this question, the Financial Stability Board launched an initiative known as the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures. TCFD is a guiding framework establishing the common principles for how companies, investors, and stakeholders should disclose risks associated with climate change. This initiative has triggered a new phase of the post-industrial and technology revolution. Novel sustainability metrics for asset valuation is now driving all investment decisions. Following TCFD recommendations published in 2017, the climate-related risks are schematically divided into two categories, transition and physical climate risks. Transition risks arise from the transition to a low-carbon economy. Physical risks refer to damages and material losses with the long-term financial consequences induced by natural hazards in changing climate. Transition risks consider how companies manage the pollution issues and the carbon tax. These don't require any climate data. In contrast, the physical climate risks are location-specific and entirely built on climate data. Day by day, local climate hazards such as droughts and hurricanes impact the company balance sheet revenues, insurance premium, and as a result, asset valuation. So, what happened before TCFD? What became the tipping point towards a low-emission, climate-resilient future? The United Nations played the major role in this overreaching climate action. Supported by the expert group of climate scientists, the Intergovernmental Panel, on climate change. In 2015, world leaders during the United Nations Climate Change Conference, widely known as COP21, signed the Paris Agreement. The goal was to limit global warming to no more than 2 degrees centigrade above the pre-industrial levels. Implementation of the Paris Agreement requires urgent economic and uh, social transformation based on decarbonization. A track to limit global warming will require cuts in net global carbon emissions of 100 person from year 2010 to year 2050. Decarbonization on this scale implies unprecedented structural changes in economies. In order to break down emission sources, companies are required to disclose on their direct and indirect carbon footprint, following the guidelines for scope 1, Scope 2 and Scope 3. And what is totally new for businesses is the assessment of physical climate risks. The assessment should take into account chronic and acute climate hazards. It should consider geographic and temporal states appropriate for the economic activity. Acute risks are event driven, these include flooding droughts, wildfires, extreme rainfall, landslides, cold stress, heat waves. These severe events have immediate and long-lasting consequences. 
Chronic physical climate risks refer to long-term shifts in climate patterns, such as the sea level rise, coastal inundation, change in temperature, and in precipitation patterns. As an example, thermal regime shifts have direct implications for power supply chain. Also, shifts in rainfall regimes lead to changes in land use and biodiversity loss. Physical climate risk data incorporates hundreds of terabytes of historical daily observations and climate modeling decades ahead. How to measure and forecast them? Whether TradeNet created a unique physical climate risk data and reporting platform, standardized risk metrics is applied to 10 climate hazards listed in TCFT recommendations. We provide location-specific risk scores. The global coverage with the high granular resolution is a true breakthrough of the product. The second breakthrough is the forward-looking scenario analysis. We help companies get a handle on their exposures in a quantitative manner. See you soon on WeatherTradNet online platform.